Tony Aguirre, and you're at Popularity. Can you describe how you approach your music? Do you mean personally or in regards to the group? It can be two different things. If I'm playing by myself at home, just practicing and writing music, it's often a, uh, almost like a therapeutic thing. Like I think music helps me relax and really just lets me express things that sometimes I can't quite find words to say. As far as the group, it's a lot different experience because when I'm by myself, it's sort of a solitary thing. But when we all work together, it's obviously collaborative, which is great because music can take turns that it wouldn't if you were working on it by itself. So one of the main things I love about that is that you can really watch a song or idea grow into something much different and sometimes a lot more interesting than it could have been if it was just written by one person. What would you say are the key challenges that the band faces during the creative process? Challenges, well, we actually work very well together, which is something that I've, you know, been in a lot of bands in my life, and a lot of times that is like where people really can get hard-headed and, you know, feelings can get hurt and egos can become an issue. But as far as our group, we try to do what's best for the song, you know, instead of serving, like, somebody's own interests. The song always takes precedence, as in, like, if this part fits, everybody is usually pretty quick to, uh, to come to agreement on, like, what is the best for that instead of in their own interest. What would you say are the biggest things that you've learned about yourself during the creation of the album? When we walked on Downtown Merry-Go-Round, I think, number one, it was our first full length together, which was incredible. Um, it was also my first time working with a producer, and we worked with Brett Hesla, who was in uh, Virgo Smilo and Dark New Day, and it's just been all around great. Um, he was also a touring bass player for Creed, so I learned a lot from him, particularly like for myself, I learned that playing lead lines, playing like melody on guitar, sometimes it's better to write the melody without having a guitar in your hands. And by that I mean we're working on a song, I think it was Pick Up the Phone, and I was playing stuff which sometimes for guitar players just comes out of like muscle memory and habit. And he told me, he's like, try putting the guitar down for a second and just listen and see what, what kind of melody, like what do you hear in your head? And it was crazy because once I put it down and it like lost the, the connection with the strings and everything, I heard like a really, like a simple, nice idea that fit it a lot better than whatever I was working with before. So once I had that melody, I just picked up the guitar, found where it was, and that's what made its way onto the track. So that was something that like, I mean, just personally was like, great tool that now I can use all the time. Um, did any of the songs surprise you by taking a different direction than you initially thought that they would? Um, there were a couple tracks that did that. I think for the most part, um, songs like Miss American Dream, which actually didn't go into our album. Let's see, the, um, the last thing that song was pretty much bare bones when we put it together. And it started off as a kind of like a, a ballad. I think Kevin came up with the idea. It was a waltz, or like it was written in a certain uh, tempo. And it really ended up coming out like a, a nice, uh, like kind of, kind of a little more rocked out than we had envisioned. But uh, that one definitely took a turn. And I, I liked how it came out. It was great. Do you find that when you perform songs that they evolve or change with each time you play them? Do songs ever grow? We play a lot of our music very structured. Like most of our live performances, they tend to stay the same in terms of, um, in terms of like the organization, the composition. But personally, I think we're always finding new ways to play the same ideas live. So like I may change guitar parts in 
a way that I find like peaceful, and especially to mix it up on tour what when you know you're playing the same thing every night. Mm -hmm. What do you feel are the most significant musical moments in your life that have influenced your journey as an artist to where you are now? <laughs> Probably number one, getting getting a guitar in the first place and falling in love with the instrument. That would be the first one, and the second would just be exposure to like different kinds of music. I grew up, um, I'm half Peruvian, and my father played music all the time. He played um, in a band called Inca Spirit. And it's funny, because it's traditional South American folk music, which you know I listened to and I heard it all the time growing up, and I actually played in a group with him, you know, for a long time, still do occasionally. So there's a lot of things there that somebody might might not pick up on, but it's like ingrained into me, you know, the culture through that through that kind of music. So I'll phrase things a little bit differently than somebody who maybe grew up on an all rock background. And of course, other other major. Um, moments would probably be getting like an amazing new record when I was younger. Like I grew up like with my first uh, first like guitar playing experiences. I remember I was learning from a group called Silverchair and they had this album Frog Stomp that was just incredible at the time. And I remember learning every single every single song front and back. And a lot of that has stayed with me, like the influence from learning that stuff to, you know, how I play today. Can you describe your attraction to music? I love music. Um, I don't think I would be happy without it. Like, if I couldn't play guitar, I would have to find something else to do. But music has always spoken to me, so much so that I started out, like, being very interested in, uh, in actual, like, art, like drawing, painting, and I did that up until I found an instrument. And what I liked about music, which kind of goes back to the talk about collaboration and songwriting, is just that art by itself, like what I was doing before, can be so solitary. Like, you know, you draw and you paint by yourself, and then I guess you can exhibit your work somewhere. But with music, it's like it offers you an immediate way to engage other people, like both listeners and other musicians, which I think that interaction is incredible, and that's one of my favorite things about it. Creating music is like organizing an accident. Do you agree with that? Organizing an accident. Yeah. Um, maybe. I, I feel like song, the songs sometimes organize themselves. Like, I feel like sometimes there's an idea, and when everybody's working on it, it, it almost, like, becomes its own thing, like, in, the, in, the, uh, in terms of, like, a song or an album. I think it's more like a, like a plant growing in, instead of an accident. I don't know. You could, you could make the claim that I guess, like, the accidents could be all the ideas that come together. Um, mm -hmm. I always felt that it was something that just kind of, like, organized itself or grew into what it was going to become. What do you find most challenging in music today? I think that one of the really difficult things can be just, like, oversaturation. In the, in the way that there's like, there's so, so many groups and especially with like having everybody extended the, uh, like the internet and like recording is a lot easier now than it was, you know, even 10 years ago. I feel like there's so much out there. And on the one hand, it's awesome because you can get to hear a lot of interesting stuff by a lot of people that you couldn't have otherwise. But at the same time, when there's that much more competition, it can be hard to get stuff heard over somebody else's. Do you have anything that you'd like to say to other readers of popularity? Yeah, thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, read 
for listening to this interview. I definitely appreciate it. Please check us out on all of our social networks, Facebook.com slash Transit Now, on MySpace and on Twitter. And, uh, we have a new cover of Bad Romance that's available as a free download. You can find off of any of our social sites.